Hey guys, welcome back. It's Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And oh my god, for the dishonor of Grayskull, they're at it again. Netflix and DreamWorks are at it again. They're promoting new She-Ra, Netflix She-Ra, by uh, essentially tossing the old show under the wheels of the bus and dismissing it entirely. Pretty again, much. Well, again. That and this, 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 okay, they're doing a, they did a special on the Today Show, which is what this is, and they were talking to the, the new uh, people on the show, and basically the show pretty much just talks about them, 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 and, you know, then when they do mention the show, it's not very uh, flattering. You know? Yeah, so they talk about the 80s Shira and they actually make it look like, look, we're going to segue into 80s Shira. Um, again, this is on the Today Show, owned Which, by NBC. Yeah, I was going to say, owned by NBC, who owns DreamWorks. There you go. So this so, is how this works. Clearly a biased piece. Go ahead. So we're not gonna play that. We're not gonna play the sound throughout most of this because we don't want a copyright strike because we know DreamWorks doesn't like our channel very much. Right, right. I'm sure they so. don't. So we're thinking, okay, this is cool. We've got 80s She-Ra and, and we're going to get, you know, the transformation And they're going to tie it into each other. Right, right. And... For the honor of this. Disappointment. Disappointment. So, uh, yeah, they transition into new She-Ra and then this whole piece uh, basically becomes all about Noelle Stevenson. Well, and not, well, yeah, and Friends. And that's what I'm, I have a problem with this is the fact that I do not remember any show... A uh, new show, even or the ones the ones that are all being reboot recently, that focuses on one person more than this show does. Yeah, and and before we get into that, uh, you know, we talk about the honor of Grayskull. There is not a lot of honor uh, and respect for yes, honor, the high respect, or great esteem, regard with great respect. Respect. No, there really isn't. And in this show, it's just it, it's very when you well as we go through the VOC, it's very uh, myopic. And, yeah, and yeah. Um, and self-centered on these people. Um, there's two things you can pretty much guarantee if there if it comes a a, a, a media article or something on Shira. The first one is guaranteed it's going to either insult the show, call it you know campy, talk about it being one-dimensional, something like that, or it's going to insult the fans of the original show, where the go-to seems to be blame uh, white men and or just men in general because they just want to fap to Shira and they don't like the new one because of misogyny. Those are their two go-tos. And then the other thing you can count on is somehow it's all about no stevenson yeah pretty it's much always all about her for whatever reason i cannot explain to you the marketing that failed so badly last year that pissed off so many old school fans they're doubling down on it and they're doing the same damn things to promote season two yeah they didn't learn anything they learned like, nothing nothing but let's let's so watch so we have this you see this here child of the 80s you think it always noel since it's not her it's that not. bev uh what's her last name again uh she, bev, let's see she, v, v, bev, bev cannon because she's the person to decide this is a great idea because you know because everybody keeps saying well you don't care about the old fans so we gotta we're gonna try to dispel that by having beth come on here and say well i was an old fan of shira and i love this because go ahead why was she a fan there wasn't that much for girls at the time. Yes, yes, you know, because, you know, lies. There wasn't much for girls at the time. It's like if you were around when you say you were, then you know that's not true. Jem and My Little Pony and, and Shira, and Shira. there's all kinds of, there's all kinds. Rainbow Bright. Yeah, Rainbow, Rainbow Bright. Bright flipping, you know, fought some woman of her belt and they, they pretty much killed her at the end. I, mean, I know, right? It was this whole idea that there's only strong females on a show like Shira is not true. They had. They had shows that were a lot of strong characters for boys too, but they had a lot that crossed over. I mean, when I was a kid, when I when you were a kid too, there was a lot of crossover, and boys watched the same shows girls did. Girls watched the same shows boys did. They keep acting like this is a new thing that we have to invent. Yeah, I I don't understand. Well, it is, and it, it, as the video goes on, you see more and more that the people working on this show have no idea what the hell they're talking about. Yes, they clearly, they really don't. If it's not about themselves, they don't care. Yeah. Go ahead. Anyway. So, you know... She had a personal connection to the show. It was really important to do it wait right. Wait a second. Personal connection to the show. You mean like a lot of the fans do? The ones that you guys keep, uh, you know, you take making sure your PR is to crap all over them? You know, her personal connection matters. Everybody else's personal connection is problematic. Yeah. Go ahead. A lot of my friends and I were having conversations about female empowerment. Uh huh. That's the casual, key, yeah. casual conversations. You know, like when I have my friends, we get up for coffee. Let's talk about female empowerment. Because you're not, it's female characters are not empowering unless they look like men. You know, female empowerment has to be, you take away anything that's feminine about them. Now they're strong, empowered characters. But go ahead. I think we just started to feel like it was the right time. Like no. there's something happening. We felt young girls really needed a new sort of superhero. Because we don't have anything like that today at all. 
Uh, yeah, and there hasn't been since, you know, original She-Ra, uh, all of the shows, uh, that, you know, Miraculous Ladybug. You and know, Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon. And I mean, Powerpuff there's so Girls many. And all like, the God animes, was, you know, yeah. but we, damn it, we haven't had things like this since, since they invented it. Go ahead. Anyway, <laughs> I think that's what blows my mind about the, the whole marketing behind the show is that basically not only are they acting like they they invented the wheel, they didn't even reinvent the wheel. They invented the wheel, and and this wheel has been turning for decades, and and they're the only ones who no, it hasn't been turned for decades. It just started. Just started. I call it. They think they have Napoleon syndrome. I really do. I think they have this this really in, overinflated opinion of what they've done, but at the same time, they're so insecure about everything they have to yap at everyone because they're so insecure about it. They, 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 they try to pretend they're bigger they're, they're really big and they know what they're doing but deep down they're just insecure messes and they're trying to blame on everybody else yeah. so anyway go ahead so, so uh, go ahead. it was awesome we're, okay, oh here, so we go. here we go here's where it gets good um, she was especially interested in my take on female characters you know somebody uh, had to be she wanted to go a little bit deeper than the typical girl power show she wanted to go deeper at Typical Girl. Which was really exciting to me. Well, wait a second. Hold on. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Here, she starts to go on, but she bashes princesses. And oh, my God. And when we were, I was watching this, uh, Pinky Boo, who is 11, was there when I was watching this. And she starts hearing this sex shit. And she literally was like, what now? And, and, and she's not a girly girl. I mean, she likes dresses and she likes girly things. But she's not what you consider, I would say, like, super girly. She's kind of mm. in the middle. You know what you think? She's like girlyish, but you know, and she's not on top. But she likes princesses. She likes because she likes Merida. And these princesses like kick butt, and then the, then she goes on to assault princesses. Go ahead, and she does it in the way you think. You can if you play the video, you can hear the um, like because they the were dainty, yeah. you know. And As they show the classic dolls, which were not these the things. Classic figures, um, they talk about how problematic princesses. My are. classic figures are nicer. I'm just saying. I know, and you don't even run the show, and you've got better. I've figures got better than she figures than she does. Anyway, go ahead. Um, I think she's just, and she's, look, look at that hair. That hair needs brushing. Look how na mad and nasty. Oh my God. They don't even brush hair. Now, what's that tell you about their credibility, people? <laughs> I'm serious. I'm, I'm completely serious. Uh, we love the show so much. It's so important to us. We don't actually even take care of the dolls. They didn't wipe the dot, the, the marks off of them. Well, she had to dig them out. They didn't get an eBay auction and then throw it on the camera so they knew what they were doing. I don't know. It's like they had to dig them out of the dumpster. Um, look, they were well loved. Dumpster to film them. Them, don't, don't clean them up. They look like they're well loved. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. <sighs> I didn't quite find myself relating to princesses when I was a kid. Neither did they I. Were always very pretty. They were always very dainty, dainty. and they were too perfect. They were too problematic. Perfect. Old Shira is too perfect. And then they showcase up. And you know what? That doll there. I have that doll too. Just saying. That is yes. I have that doll too, and she's got brushable hair. She does. Anyway, go ahead. Um, I don't know if Noel Stevenson brushes her hair. Does she th not take very good care of her Shira? I don't think she was. Those would be her dolls. I didn't think they were supposed to be her dolls, were they? Uh, yeah, I think that's her office. I don't know. Well, her dolls are crap. Uh, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> they were too perfect. They were too perfect. And that wasn't my experience. That wasn't girl. my experience either. But you know what? Wait, pause for a second. That wasn't my experience as a girl either. Yet, I still love these shows. I wasn't a perfect princess. I wasn't very girly. I, I've told you guys the stories how I used to tuck my hair up in a ball cap and go pretend to be a boy at the at the, at the fly-ins and stuff at the airport because people think I was a boy. It was not my experience to be super princessy either. Yet, I still related to She-Ra because she wasn't super feminine. She was, but she wasn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, I love this section. I have to t comment on this because they have her staring off the like, stare off into space, you know, wish wistfully and then look at the camera. It's really funny. I'm sorry. I just have to, it's just funny. Uh, we need some dramatic music. There it is. Do, do, do. You know, I, it didn't ring true to me. So now it's going to be all true now because I'm here to make it so. Oh, anyway. Yeah, and then they cut right. Okay. So I didn't like super girly princesses. I think they were fake. It didn't ring true to me. It, you know, they were lies. And then we cut to classic She-Ra. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. I know, really. I know. This is so propaganda. Oh, and they talk about the super diverse uh, people on the cast that are almost all women. You know. Okay, so this is this is really interesting. Uh, we have a lot of women. We have okay. This this is really interesting. This says so much. We have a lot of people from different backgrounds. Uh, the fact that we wanted to make a show that reflected what we wanted to see and who we were as people. Yeah, it's about She-Ra. People who did not probably see the original show because they don't look old enough to have seen the original no. show. No, she might. But the rest of them don't look old enough to have seen the original show. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, but it gets better. It, gets it better. does get better. Uh, it was like another reason we all really care about She-Ra. We have a first-time oui, 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 oui. art director. First-time directors. First time story editor. So we really relied on each other. Yeah, pause it. So let's let's do this, this oh again. 
We have a first time uh, producer, mm -hmm. first time of all these other things, and then including a story editor. And we wondered why we got things like Princess Prom and the plot wasn't very good. Yeah, it shows. <laughs> it, it does. Shows. It's like the blind lean the blind. Like Noelle Stevenson, first time showrunner. Uh, first time, I think I'm, I think her credits prior to She-Ra were just uh, co-writing a couple episodes of, of different uh, Disney TV shows. Co-writing. I don't think she wrote a whole episode herself. And next thing you know, she's in charge of a whole show. Mm -hmm. like, there's some disconnect somewhere. There, there's there's something, something went down. We're missing Not something. only in charge of a whole show, but it's the whole new show is all about her. Like all the promotion is being made about her and not the show, which you don't see on these things. So there's something. She's like, what she got on these people or something. There's, there's I don't something. Know. This doesn't, it doesn't add up. The career trajectory does not make sense. But the thing, the thing about it too is like, yeah, other shows that actually have veteran uh, showrunners, you don't. You don't hear about them. Mm -mm. Like they don't push the showrunner more than the, the show. More than the show. They actually literally push her more than they push the show. I mean, they literally might as well call this, you know, Noelle Stevenson's Shira trademark copyright, you know, um, because they do. It's like even the Entertainment Weekly interview or the story talking about Shira when it first broke last year had a giant picture of her head with a little Shira on her shoulder. Yeah. I mean, this show is being promoted as basically Noelle Stevenson's creation. It's being... Uh, well, it's not even about her creation. It's been, she herself is being promoted more than the show is. Right. Well, I mean, when she's making comments like Shira is her daughter, and I'm like, Shira has been around for decades. You're you're her daughter, yeah. you know? Uh, and you should be honored to work on a show with, with such uh, an amazing history and well, that you just completely disregard. Well, you summed it up right there. I think the problem they're having is it, it, they could have come at this and they could have come at this and been like, you know, we need to make a show, but this is a show that's an established IP. It has a fan base. What can we do to make a show that honors the old show, honors the old voice actors, which is a big point we're going to bring up later, yeah. honors, or honors the, the women who came before, who made this thing very, who were strong women in the industry, who, who were the ones who got she were looking like she looked, the toys like they were, mm -hmm. the stories like they were. How can we honor them? How can we honor the, the very diverse, uh, you know, people that worked at Filmation. Filmation was probably the most diverse animation studio in, in Hollywood. Uh, lots of LGBTQ employees, people of color, uh, women as showrunners 30 years ago. Right. How, I mean, can, come on. how can we honor the old fans who not are only men, but are women, are LGBTQ people, are people that, you know, that meant so much to them? How can we do a new show? that takes what was great about that, the old one, and, and translate it into not only a new show, but for, for people for today, but we still remember what came before. That was what, how you should handle it. That is not what they've done. What they basically did was everything that came before is shit. Everything that came before is campy. Everything that came before is one dimensional. It couldn't possibly compare to us, me, me, me. me. I, I hear me and us so many times in here. I, all these first-time showrunners, first-time producers, first-time storyboard artists, first-time uh, art directors, first-time, yeah. Right, I think this is, this, this is indicative of the maturity level. Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to be that way, but this is indicative of the, mat indicative of the maturity level of these people. It's very self-centered. Um, but they're, they're, they're out there saying we want diversity, we want to expand this, we want to focus on people different than ourselves, and we want to, you know, have, give everybody a voice. Except for the people we don't like, they have no voice. Yeah. Yeah, um, pretty much. I mean, it's it. Yeah, and they dismiss the people who have any. Which criticism. we're gonna get to that. We're gonna yeah. get to the voice actors in a minute, but. So they had to rely on each other because nobody knows what the hell they're doing. We can skip ahead so, a little bit here. Yeah, this is where um, they, they defeat the horde with the rainbow. Oh, with the rainbow, right? Because you know, is, you know, um, um, not that far. So anyway, we go back here. We're gonna get into the voice actors of Sheer here in a minute. Um, let's get past her a little bit more, and then the voice start. actors who, frankly, I believe they need to to. Stop them from speaking out yeah. on the show's Here, behalf. We'll show you guys. Oh my God. Just wait till you hear these ones. The voice actress is Shira. I find her very um, haughty <laughs> and screechy. Anyway, haughty, not haughty. Haughty. Yeah. haughty. Um, but they're like, girl power isn't explicitly stated in our show, but it's implied. Now, here's where it gets really good, guys. And I think it's because Noelle has created, Noelle has created a post misogynist, misogynist world. world. What the hell is that? I don't know, but my next comment is post misogynist world where women are treated as equals. Um, did you see the original show? No. It, clearly, because <laughs> this is nothing new. The original show did this and did it well. 
yeah, the original show we had Adora was Captive the Guard. She was like the highest ranking soldier. We had Shadow Weaver, uh, who was, you know, pretty much second command of the entire horde. We had uh, several women were, you know, it was a matriarchy. I mean, you had so many kingdoms that, that women were in charge on Ethereum. And then even He-Man, you had many, many strong female characters, many right. of them in charge on uh, Eternia. Yeah, because they knew they had crossover audiences. Right, and He-Man and Adora's mother, Adam and Adora's mother, uh, was an Earth astronaut, a female right. astronaut. Nuh uh can't be. They invented this. Yeah. Noel right. invented the post misogynist world of, of She Ra because before her, it was all misogyny all the time. So. Now, now that you can use your bag of dicks, Joe. It was all <laughs> darkness and dicks. You know, before. yes, because that was their, their <laughs> world of misogyny before Noel came along and made it, you know, this way. And what makes me mad, too, is back in the 80s, it was a time where uh, women were really fighting for, uh, and they actually legitimately were fighting then, for the chance to even get to run a show at all. Um, the woman, uh, what's her name, Gwen? And she, uh, you know, she was, she had got to do this opportunity. And she had guys walking out, didn't want to work with her, and she dealt with it. Yeah. And back when I was a kid, like 80s, they had like these Barbies that were day to night Barbie because they were showing that they could, women could do the office work and could do what men could do. And it was a much larger, believe it or not, a much larger battle for uh, equality in the workplace than what you see today. It's not like there's, there isn't an obvious, you know, ratio differential now. There are a lot less women than men working in these industries, but back then it was far worse. It was far worse than it is today. And I'm tired of these people spinning this narrative like they invented women's rights. They invented, you know, diverse, you know, people, diverse casts, diverse workspace. They yeah, invented it. And it's like, that is not what happened. So stop belittling people. Stop doing it. Just stop. Just stop. Go ahead. Which is like very refreshing to live in because obviously as soon as we walk out of this room, we're faced with things on a daily basis like a bag of dicks. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, like, like real walk... world because, you know, heaven oh forbid. Oh my god. Is it really that bad? But in this world, no, it's woman, not. a woman power is not something that's commented on. A woman's shape is not commented on. Uh, yeah, the, the, that's a, the, why do they keep focusing on body shapes, like body types? They keep focusing on this like a lot, and, but they did not invent this. Other shows have done it prior to this. Yeah, I know, and they've they've done it better in some regards because it's not it's not like they didn't make it the focus that, of yes, the exactly. marketing push. It was like even Steven Universe. It was like, yep, here's the show, and it's a good show about different kinds of characters, different body types. It wasn't like do we mention that that we're leading with this and everything we do? Yeah, it was just like we put the show out there, and oh, by the way, you know, it's again uh, sign of insecurity. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. It's very important that we represent diversity of characters, body shape. They go on and on and on about body shapes. Well, this, and the diversity. This is like high guardian spice. Do we mention how diverse we are? Do We're we mention diverse. diversity? We're diverse. We want everybody to accept everyone, except for uh, except for old Shearer. We don't want to accept the voice actors. We don't want to accept the people who like the show. We don't want to even accept the show. So we're really accepting of everything, but what we don't want to accept. Yeah, it's so. Then just make a new show. Make a new show. Romantic and gender oh, expression. Oh no, no, no kidding. Um, you know, I mean, I'm like, come on, it's I, I, I get it. But let's let's go ahead to Bo. Yeah, no, no. I actually like her. She's, she's so actually cute. seems nice, but she's I like really the reaction like to the show's been very positive. I'm like, she's not on the internet very much, is she. But anyway, I really like her though. She's like, she I actually does like seem her. legitimately nice. And I think there are people on the show want to hug her. who are legitimately decent people. And then you got Marcus Scribner. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> A decent person. What I'm saying is, he's obviously he's young, young. He's young. Um, and he very and he doesn't understand. Um, when you keep his mouth shut. I was like, he doesn't understand what the word respect means. He does not. He does not understand the word respect. Um, Marcus Scribner pissed me off so bad last fall when they did the live stream on Sci-Fi, also owned by NBC, and he shot his mouth off about the original uh, Bo voice actor. And talked about how robotic and stiff and horrible the acting was. I'm like, God, well, I'll give him a pass because he is young. It is a live stream and maybe DreamWorks will rein him in. Hell no. He does it again. He does it again in this very video. He mocks the guy. Mocks the, the original voice actor of Bo. R.I.P. What the hell is wrong with you? Here we go. And I'm going to turn the volume on for this one. Oh, I'm so pissed. <laughs> okay, so she can That's turn so she can useful. turn her sword into objects. So like back in the old okay, days, right, Shiro was like this middle-aged white man who was like, "Ah, oh, Shira, let's save the day." Shira, 
Thank goodness you're here. I feel like Nubo is obviously okay. different in that he's an African-American character, and I think he's a really cool male. So what makes him different is he's African-American now, but he's cool because he's, he's he goes cool, on to though. say, because you don't see a lot of characters like that. I mean, cool characters in animation now, right? You don't see that anymore. There are no cool male Thank characters. Thank God they came along with the show God. and Marcus Scribner to, to make sure they fix that situation. Thank God. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's thank God for you, Marcus Scribner. Oh my God. Can you believe, I mean, they, I cannot believe that they are once again letting him piss all over well, the original actors. Once again, they're making this about them, 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 and not what came before. They're, they're putting her in there here and there to be like, you know, to a nod to her, but they're not, they're not. They're not mentioning it much. They're not being like it came from the show from the eighties. It's really, no. really popular. It's really important to many people. No, no. Other than flashing her a couple times, saying a line. That's all they do. It's almost like, and then some of the cuts, like I said, it just looked like they were talking about the things that were problematic with Shira. The only time you see uh, any glimpse of the original show is right after they're talking about how awful it was, or they show the original toys when they're talking about how problematic it was right. for all the women to have princess body so types. So here's the problems, like the old show. It's all yeah. sucks, like the old show. Yes. And it's like, you got to stop doing this. I'm telling you DreamWorks right now, because I know you have some people out to listen to all these videos. We already know from people in the industry, because yes, we do know people in the industry, that we're pretty much infamous over there. And we know this, because we know people over there. So anyway, my point is... We got eyes and ears yeah, everywhere. My point is, I know you listen to this. <laughs> yeah. So take a, take a bit of advice. We're trying to help you. We're legitimately trying to help you here. You need to stop this. You need to, you can do your show and you can be different and that's fine. Not everything about it's terrible. We have said there's, there's some good things about it. But people have their backups so bad about your show from your behavior, the behavior of your showrunner, the behavior of your VP, the behavior of your PR people, the behavior of your voice actors are causing people who are old time fans of the show, which you seem to think are a small number of people, yeah, right. which you're wrong about. It's causing these people to not want to watch your show. And that trickle down effect, when you constantly have attacking, tacking, 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 they're spraying it to their friends and their friends. And these people are a lot of the parents of your supposed target demographic. The people you want to, to sponsor and pay for your stuff. They don't want to watch it either because you're insulting them. So maybe, just maybe, it's probably a good idea to stop doing that. Find good things that tie into both and promote that and stop calling people names. Stop saying anybody who doesn't like Shira's body type is a misogynistic man who doesn't is mad because she doesn't have boobs. Cause that's not true. I'm a woman. I hate it too. And I don't want to play with her boobs. <laughs> so I'm just saying, you know, I know you're listening to this. That's a take. Oh, and also why stop pushing Noel Stevenson. She might be the, the, the person that's, that's the producer on the show or whatever, whatever title she has. Showrunner. Executive showrunner. Showrunner, whatever. Producer, yes. But you know what? It's a, if you keep saying it's a team effort and you have a diverse team, then why is it a team that's all behind her? Like it's always her and then a couple of our team. That's a that's a that's a very valid question. That's a very valid. Anyway, point. sorry. He wanted to keep it short, and I'm making it long. Sorry. Uh, yeah, my my advice again, if you're listening, DreamWorks, because we know you listen. Uh, fire your marketing team. Definitely fire marketing. Fire team. your marketing. Have team. a sit down with your people working on the show and saying, hey, you know what? I don't know if you're insecure or what, or it's your age. But this whole idea in, in like the media and stuff now, and in these people promoting shows, that you have to belittle the, what happened before, belittle everything else to raise yourself up, makes you look like a small person, makes you look terrible, and you probably should stop flipping doing that. Kill the past. Yeah, it worked so well for Star Wars, didn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, so. Where else are we going with this? Oh, uh, I skip ahead, but you know, talking about the different characters. You guys, we'll put a link so you can see the whole thing. But let me see this for a minute. Um, there was some stuff here down the road further. I was going to talk about with her at the end, and it was, you know, um, they're talking. There is back to making it about me, about them. They talk about um, too often. I think we're all sort of making the shows for ourselves. Yes, you are. That's, That's the, the problem. problem. That is the problem. You're not making the show for your audience. You keep saying your audience are children. That is not your target audience. It is clear from who's been hired, the behaviors, the attitudes, the what you said in this interview, you are clearly making the show for a specific audience and it is not kids. No, they tried to uh, say it was kids with that uh, International Women's Day piece they did uh, the other day, um, but it's clearly not. And I think they, they failed to pick up a, a younger audience. It's basically, this is a show by Tumblr for Tumblr. Mm -hmm. uh, Tumblr is not going to buy your merchandise, uh, DreamWorks or Mattel. They're not going to buy the dolls. 
They're not exactly. going to buy stuff. They don't. They'll yeah. make fan art. They'll make lots of fan art, but it's not going to translate into dollars. Yes, yeah, so they, they admit we're making a show for ourselves in the past. We were making a show for what we think kids want to see now by people who probably don't have kids. Um, I, I'm just saying, you know what? You could do your show, whatever. Um, we're not going to watch it because it's frankly not that good. Um, our, and our tar, tar, your target audience, which is my daughter and her friends, also don't think it's very good. Um, but you know, fine, do your show, do what you want to do, and that's fine. You do you, but stop doing you at, at the cost of the original Shira, the cost of the original voice actors, the cost of all the women and the the, the, the diverse people at, at uh, F uh, Filmation who did it first, at the cost of the fans, the old school fans. Just stop. Stop. Right, because I'm, I'm, I'm so mad. I'm so mad. And it's yep. clearly an immaturity level thing here. I really do. Yeah, and I think this is actually this is actually our second take on this video. The I was first, much angrier. The first one was very, very ranty. This one's actually toned down. Uh, we're trying to make trying to make our points, I guess, without getting into too much. Well, uh, I'm ranting some. Too much mudslinging. But um, yeah, th this is a huge failure. Like they're doing it again. I can't believe they're stupid enough to do it again after it worked it, it backfired spectacularly to attack you think the they tried something new because i i don't think they're getting the eyeballs they thought they were going to get which is why we're seeing it up on all these they, the news outlets the amount of news outlets they went to after it was released even it was so many and i'm just like somebody's not getting the hits they thought they were going to get yeah dragon prince did dragon prince is like hey by the way season two's out okay and everybody's watching it you know yeah. talking about it but, yeah yeah um like i said tumblr fan art is not Dollars. It's not going to translate into I'm dollars. Sorry, I'm not sure. Look, that is a boy. <laughs> Everything about this. Look at this. Everything about this is a boy. The way the legs are. Those legs are awfully thick. I mean, if her legs are that thick, that's bigger. That's way out of proportion. This is a boy. I'm, I mean, I'm sorry. It's a boy. But it's not. It's Shira. And I don't. That's another thing. I don't understand. We keep hearing these people saying that we want more representation, more female characters, stronger female leads. But being feminine is problematic. So the strong female leads, they take away what a attributes of them make them feminine that they have problems with, and they basically look like a boy, act like a boy, fight like a boy. So what's the effing point of having strong female characters if they're essentially a boy, but you're saying they're a girl? Go women's rights. I don't know. <laughs> Are we going to wrap this one up? I know, I'm sorry. I'm just mad. That's okay. I'm trying to be good. The last take was I was much, much <laughs> I'm like, when was this up? They only had 11,000 views and price the a couple this, days this ago. Been, this has been since the seventh. They've only had this many we views. Will, we will have more views on our version of this video than they will, um, and that's why they're they're. What are the comments? They all left them on. Go. Let's go lesbians. <laughs> that, 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 well, they don't. You know, here's the thing. This is what all the flipping Rotten Tomatoes reviews were saying. Five star. Let's go lesbians. Because when they, I'm, I'm going to say it because they're doing it here. What they say about it, you know empowering females. That's what they're meaning. Because, you know, any other woman apparently, you know, isn't okay. Yeah, but go lesbians. Again. Oh my God, that's all this is. Glorious 80s. It's not 80s. Uh, I love what they're doing with the show, says the person with the Steven Universe avatar. Mm-hmm. Um, Lord grant me the serenity to read the comments, the courage to not read the comments, and the wisdom to <laughs> not read the comments. I can't <laughs> top that I one. Yeah, you win. I can't top that one. So we're going to wrap this one up. Yeah. All right, guys, please subscribe to Clownfish TV for more pop culture, news views, rants, gaming videos, art videos, and more. This has been Neon and Geeky. Bye. Goodbye. But to be completely honest, why most people are mad and didn't give the show a chance was because you guys made them mad before you even put an episode up because you acted like a bunch of dicks. Like a bag oh, of sorry. dicks. I'm sorry. I'm not allowed to say bag of dicks because that's misogyny. Uh, you acted like a bunch of vaginas. The unwashed smelly kind. And that's why. Oh my God. <laughs> well, you can't. You... Nobody wants to associate. <laughs> I'm just saying. We can't say bag of dicks because, you know, that's misogyny. And we created a world that was misogyny free. <laughs> that sounds so... like that sounds like a new He-Man villain. Bag of dicks. Like many faces. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Bag of dicks. I, hate, I can't even want to think <laughs> what that character is. Skeletor's, Skeletor's new henchman. Bag of dicks. <laughs> I'm just saying. Because we don't want misogyny in here. It's a bag of vaginas, and oh but you know, because we, I mean, we want to make sure we get across the way that they're being, they're behaving badly. They're smelly vaginas. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. 
ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.